It's um, my pleasure to introduce our next talk by Sabeta Matsumoto. Uh, Sabeta, take it away. Hello, I'm Sabeta Matsumoto. Um, I'm currently an associate professor at, in the School of Physics at Georgia Tech. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about my path here. Um, to some extent, for me, ending up as faculty is a bit inevitable. So um, I was born in Berkeley, California. Um, these are my parents, Kent and Dee. Um, I'm actually not um, a college brat. I'm not, I, we're actually just, that's where my dad's family is from, Berkeley. Um, but my dad is um, a PhD organic chemist and he worked in industry doing diagnostics. And my mom's a geologist um, and she didn't end up getting her PhD because of sexism in the um, late seventies was not really conducive to women um, doing science, but they're huge science nerds. Um, and so I came along and they were, I was going to be a science nerd um, when I was learning to, when I was like a little kid and they were toilet training me. Um, I remember, well, I don't remember this, but my parents tell me that I made this joke where I was like super excited that, you know, I, I went in the bowl, um, and I was like, look, mom, I made H2P. Um, and so that was, that was like how I was, I was raised. Um, and I guess I come from like a long line of people who have, um, that sort of scientific background. This is my grandfather. This is my mom's dad, um, and he was uh, a professor in the um, College of Pharmacy um, in at Columbia, um, and here's him lecturing. Um, he was also married to um, a woman who was, um, she didn't get a, her PhD in organic chemistry, but was also an organic chemist. Um, so I mean, really, I think she should have been a botanist because like that was really where her her love was, but she had her degree in um, in chemistry. Um, so I have like three organic chemists and like a direct descendant of. Um, and then also this is my dad's mom. She's not a scientist, but during World War II, she stood up to the U.S. Army over their treatment or what they were going to do with orphan children during the, um, when they interned the Japanese. Um, so I feel like I get a lot of like bullheadedness and like a lot of like personality from her. Um, she lived to be 101. Uh, so this is pretty, pretty incredible woman. Um, I definitely, um, I grew up with her and my parents and like that was like she is a really big part of my life so I guess how did I actually end up where I am so I guess starting in high school so I pulled out my old high school yearbook um today and this is what I found so I went to this tiny tiny high school this is my graduating class there were 25 of us it was a brand new school so like we didn't even have that many people in classes. So we were really close with all of our teachers. Um, and so um, this is Jim Hogan, who was my chemistry teacher. And this is Jonathan Briggs, who was a math teacher and my physics teacher. Um, and so they always would sort of tease me about like, what am I going to do? What's my, what's my career going to be? What's my science going to be? Um, they give me a hard time about stuff. Apparently when I was in, um, in AP chemistry, I was like this total bratty kid who would just sit in the back of the class, like with my arms crossed and just look bored, um, <laughs> which is apparent, well, which now being on the other end of the, the teaching must have just been like the worst thing ever. Um, but uh, Jim was really lovely, and um, this is what he wrote in my yearbook, is um, all the best at Penn, remember to invite me to Stockholm for the ceremony, my love and best wishes. Um, so I definitely had um, a lot of people like rooting for me. Um, I guess this was my yearbook page, and I, I really found like this quote, um, 
I put in here hilarious. It's, I will not expose the ignorance of the faculty, question mark, Bart Simpson. Um, and I, it's really funny because I still have that same sense of humor. And I feel like somehow I'm like, I, I don't even feel the same person as I was in high school, but I guess I guess I am. Um, so I went to uh, Penn and I had absolutely no intention of being a physicist. Um, I started out and I wanted to be a surgeon. So I was gonna go study biochemistry and go to medical school. Um, and I was in a program that was like, oh, learn physics and math first, and then you can learn biology later. And I started out working, um, my work study let me work in labs and I started in a hematology oncology lab. And it was really fun. I had my own little gene. I was like pipetting it and doing PCR and it was fine. And then one day we had to kill mice and I, I just walked out. I just I completely, I noped out. I, I was, I, I think I ghosted the lab. I was, which is embarrassing now, but um, I left um, after maybe six weeks of working with them. And one of my friends who was like one of my homework buddies from physics was working um, in the physics department and had been since he was um, uh, since he was in high school and he was working with um, one of the high energy groups um, building circuits. So these circuits went into the detector at CERN. So when I was the summer of my freshman year, I got sent to um, I got sent to, to CERN to go work on assembling these. So I basically spent a lot of my undergrad doing sort of electrical engineering stuff and designing things with lasers and circuit boards and, and things like that. But it, it wasn't real research. It was like a very, I was a, a very skilled technician, but it didn't feel like research. Um, and at some point I got this really amazing scholarship, which uh, still exists um, and it's, Basically, if you agree to get um, a master's degree in addition to your bachelor's degree, they would pay for two years, uh, like full two years of college. And I'm still paying off student debt from the two years I did pay for. So this just is really life changing for me. Um, so I got this award, which was like, OK, well, I'm going to go get um, a master's in physics now. Um, and I guess at the same time, I had been taking some grad classes and I took um, a math methods class with um, Randy Kamian. Um, and I guess he kept asking me like, oh, well, why are you working with name redacted? Why are you working with name redacted? And I just kept being like, I don't know, I don't know. And then one day I was feeling super sassy and basically was just like, well, what, should I work for you? And he's like, uh-huh. So um, that's how I, I got this job. So that I spent my senior year working for him. And then that turned into my PhD um, project. And so we studied liquid crystals and I learned I love making pretty pictures and computer graphics and rendering and stuff like that. Um, during that time, um, one of my office mates was studying this mathematical object called the hyperbolic plane. And so I looked it up on Google and I found that it's this thing that people were really into crocheting. And at the time I was like, well, it was and still am like a huge um, like knitter. Um, I really like like knitting, sewing, crafts, like and like all of the um, those sort of traditional kind of housewife crafts. I just, I love those. Um, and I did them with my mom when I was a kid and that's, I still like them. So I sort of learned that, oh, wow, there's this huge overlap with, with math. Um, and when I was in grad school, oops, that is, I guess you can't see that. I can show you um, at some other time, um, this, I made this like really big wall hanging. It's um, a Chinese dragon um, and what, um, 
what's really kind of amazing about this is like I had been knitting for a really long time when I made this and I was like I discovered that there was a stitch in it that I had never seen so I was wondering like mathematically what stitch like what stitches can be made um and so that kind of got me thinking about this um kind of as a career uh, I after this um I ended up doing two postdocs um the first one was at the Princeton Center for Theoretical Science um, so it's sort of interesting because it's like a totally open thing, so you can do what you want, but I think there's a bit of give yourself enough rope to hang yourself, um, to be said, because I definitely spent way too long just reading math papers and not actually working on my own research. Um, anyway, this is, I ended up working on some projects with, um, freestanding block copolymers, and then I went to, um, Harvard and did a postdoc with uh, Maha and Michael Brunner. Um, and when I was trying to figure out a project to work on, um, Michael gave me probably the best advice anyone's given me in my career and was like, well, just go, go to group meetings with experimentalists, find out what people are doing in this area, you know, just meet people, you'll figure something out. So I did, and I met, this is Sydney Gladman, um, and she was a uh, material scientist working in Jennifer Lewis's lab. So we had this whole project about um, making these, um, like we called them 40 printed, uh, basically flowers, where you could like program shape change into them. So this is like a video of that. So that was like my first taste of really interdisciplinary research. Um, and so when I went on the job market, I was like, I, I want to take this like knitting stuff that I love and turn that into my job. Um, and I was super, I don't know, I not really avant-garde, but it was like a thing that a lot of people were super interested in. So I got a lot of interviews, but not that many people really actually wanted to hire me. So I was fortunate that Georgia Tech is really, um, oops, is really interested in, um, uh in hiring like people with like very diverse interdisciplinary backgrounds and at, at the same time I was getting a job I also ended up um getting divorced so that was um a big thing in my life was trying to uh I basically like chose my career my ex sort of what wanted preferred like specific parts of the world to live in and have kids in a very traditional life. And I really didn't, I really wanted to, to start a faculty job and do my own thing. Um, I think I'm talking for too long, so I'll try to be really fast. I just want to say, I, so I started this lab at Georgia Tech, the Geometry of Materials Lab. Um, these are the some of the amazing people who I work with, um, and they um, gave me the um, I guess sort of inspired me to uh, come out. So I identify as bi or pansexual um, and that's something I never felt like I needed to say, but um, I really just love my students for making everyone's identity feel valid. Um, and so I guess here's some, some other things I've done. These are like, virtual reality art exhibitions, um, moving toys. This is from a YouTube video on Stand Up Maths channel. So we, we basically try to just make everything fun. Um, this is a project that we did recently. Um, so I designed this tower, friends of mine, it's nine feet tall. They welded it together and I liked it so much. I got it tattooed on my back. Um, so I, I think basically for me, I have like a really horrible work-life balance. Um, and that's because basically I take everything I love and turn it into work. <laughs> so everything I find like a hobby, everything I want to be interested in, it just becomes like the next project that, that we work on in my lab. Um, so, um, basically I just really love the idea of, breaking borders, having fun, being yourself. And I hope that all of my students feel that they can be comfortable doing that. And I think that would be my message to anyone in science.
Thank you, Svetza, for a very inspiring talk, um, applauding on behalf of the uh, audience. Um, yeah. And uh, if, yeah, if anyone has any questions, please um, go ahead and uh, leave them in the chat. Um, but I'll uh, start with a, a question that I had. So you, you talked a lot about the, you know, the interests that you've had and how those have fed into your career. Um, have things ever gone in the opposite direction where you've gone down new paths um, outside of uh, uh, outside of what you've done before because of what you learned at work and research? Um, oh, that's a great question. Trying to think of, I mean, I feel like I feel like, yes, like I certainly that 3D printing project, like that is now like an art form. I do like a lot of things with 3D printing, like mm. kind of as a hobby. Um, like I design a lot of jewelry. Um, and this, so I, every year I make a new piece for my mom. So I think a lot of like all of that stuff has sort of turned into a hobby for me. Um, so I, I think maybe. Yes, um, I I really love math. So I feel like every bit of math you learn is just, there is something that's beautiful about it and you can illustrate it or use it in science in a way that like maybe it wasn't intended to, but I think that that's a, another thing that sort of feeds back into like going from an academic subject to like a hobby subject. Thank you, thank you. Um. So uh, thank you again for a wonderful talk. Um, 